Hey everybody, my name is Christopher Odd. Thanks again to Paradox Interactive for inviting me. I'm here to discuss some party compositions for the Lamplighters League. Now, both combat and out of combat considerations need to take place, but I'll be focusing primarily on combat today. For out of combat considerations and to learn about the three agent roles of sneak, bruisers, and saboteurs, make sure you check out Party Elite's video on this channel. First, if you're feeling overwhelmed and you're unsure of who to pick once you've built up a large roster of agents, you can always fall back on the tried and true way of just building a three-person party. You'll want a tanky agent, a DPS agent, and a support agent. If you review the agent screens and the skill trees in the hideout, this will give you a good idea of where each character would fit within those archetypes. Those screens will also show agents health, armor, ideal range, damage output, and speed. Uh, I'd recommend choosing agents with a mix of ideal ranges so that you can address all types of threats on the battlefield. With 10 recruitable agents, each with individual skill trees, you're going to have a lot of different options to choose from. Keep in mind as well that there's going to be cards that will modify the way that your agents perform. And we'll talk about some of these as we go through these options today. Uh, I thought it might be fun to just show you some party combinations I've been experimenting with that, in my opinion, are both effective and also really fun. First up, a party combination that I'm calling Marked for Slaughter. This group comprises three agents who can either apply or take advantage of the marked status on enemies. We have Eddie, our duelist gunfighter, Latif, our master of misdirection, and Pranima, our expert sniper. With this group, we have four ways to mark enemy units. As a reminder, if a unit is marked, they're 15% easier to hit. But some members of this party are going to gain additional benefits against marked targets. The first way to apply marked is very straightforward using Pranima's Zero In ability. She'll apply Mark to all enemies in an area, and as an added bonus, she gets to go invisible afterwards as well. The second way comes from Eddie's Light em Up ability. When this is upgraded, it can target up to six enemies, and regardless of if the shots land or not, the enemies will be marked. But enemies that are hit will also be flushed from cover. The third way to mark targets with this group is through Eddie's passive ability called Set Em Up, where landed attacks have a 25% chance to apply marked all the time. And the fourth and sneakiest way to apply marked comes from our gentleman Jin, aka Latif. He's got a skill called Unshakable that normally negates one incoming stress when an attack against him misses, but at Unshakable level two, it also marks the enemy that missed their attack against him. This is really powerful because of his innate passive ability called Dodge, which grants him an evade stack each time that he moves. So, enemies are marked. Now what? Well, now we start blasting. Eddie has an ability called Bullseye that's guaranteed to hit the target, has increased crit chance, deals double damage, and if the target is marked, does even more bonus damage. High HP enemies will not be high HP for long. Pranima has a kill shot ability, which has an increased crit chance, and even if it misses, will guarantee a 50% graze damage, but if the target's marked, she'll gain 1 AP just for hitting them. And this is really important to an agent like her because some of her most powerful abilities cost 2 AP. And of course, even Latif or any other agent for that matter can take advantage of marked enemies by just having an easier time hitting them. You can always check in the top right of the screen when targeting enemies to see the effects of the buffs or debuffs on your aim. There are of course some cards for your undrawn hand tableau that can help here too. Be on the lookout for Avenger, which applies mark to any enemy who attacks an agent with that card, or watch for the Scryer, which grants an ability to mark all enemies within a cone. These cards for your undrawn hand can give agents some additional flex in your party composition ideas, so make sure to experiment often. The next party composition is going to be called Two Tanks Are Better Than One, because sometimes they are. Earlier on I mentioned you can't go wrong with a tank agent, a DPS agent, and a support agent. Well, just forget that for a minute because rules are meant to be broken. In this team comp we're looking at two tanks, namely Fadir and Judith. You can add almost anybody you want to the mix for the third agent here. So we'll just be focusing on some neat things you can do between Fadir and Judith. The first thing you need to know here is that Fadir has the short fuse passive. So when he gets attacked, he builds Rage. Rage grants some of his abilities additional effects. Thing to know number two, Fadir has a Provoke ability that causes enemies to attack him. 
you can probably see where this is going. He also has an ability called Rancor, which grants him extra damage when he has Rage, and it can be upgraded to shred enemy armor and even increase his speed. On top of that, his signature ability called Manhandle allows him to grab an enemy and launch them, inflicting knockdown in an AoE where they land. So just keep these things in mind for now. I'm going to shift over to Judith for a second. While Fadir is attracting everyone's attacks, Judith can use her Fortify ability to reduce incoming damage by half. Then, because enemies have likely swarmed to Fadir, thanks to Provoke, she could come in with her Shield Slam that knocks enemies back, causing knockdowns on collisions, and she gets bonus armor for each unit that she hits. The tank becomes tankier. Now that alone is very powerful, but here's something we're going to throw in just for funsies. Judith has an ability called Sticky Grenade. So imagine, if you will, a Sticky Grenade that's tossed onto an enemy that's close to Fadir. Fadir can use his manhandle ability to toss that enemy towards another group of enemies, and two tanks are better than one. That's what I said earlier. Now, if you're looking for card combos here, I'd recommend being on the lookout for the Tyrant card that Fadir could use to inflict plus one stress on attackers. That would be a nice little benefit and a nice pairing with his Provoke and Rage. Last but not least, one of my favorite party combos right now is called Say Yes to the Stress. Pretty proud of that name. The goal of this party is to trigger stress breaks on enemies as quickly as possible and use Finisher to clear them up. This is particularly strong against high HP or armored enemies because instead of chewing through all the HP, you can simply focus on the stress meter. Now this party is going to be centered around Celestine, our occult assassin, Alexandrite, our glamour mage, and one very important and very strong card called the Monument. For reasons I'll explain shortly, somebody who can shoot at multiple targets will amplify how strong this group is, but you can choose anyone. I'm going to go with Eddie, our gunfighter again, who made an earlier appearance in the Marked for Slaughter group. He's just that good, and he's going to help you a lot. So what are all the ways that we can inflict stress with this group? Buckle up, because there's a lot, but I'll, I'm going to cover the main ones. The easiest way is by equipping the Monument card. This grants the agent the ability to inflict two stress on surrounding enemies in a large AoE. You're going to want this on somebody that wants to get up close and personal, and since Celestine has a melee overwatch ability and some self-sustain abilities, she makes a pretty good candidate. Number two, I lied to you. The actual easiest way is to just use consumables called stress flasks. Anybody can use these to inflict two stress on everyone in a small AoE. Third, Celestine's curse ability. This is a hex that deals one stress and applies cursed. Cursed means that when the unit is attacked, they'll receive an additional one stress than they normally would. Fourth, we have Alexandrite's Tether ability that forges an arcane connection between two minds, and they suffer stress every round. Cool thing here is if either tethered enemy suffers a stress break, the other enemy will stress break as well. Lastly, we have Alexandrite's Warp Image ability that weaves a glamour on a target that causes the unit's teammates to perceive it as hostile. And that will last until they've been attacked two or three times, depending on what level the skill is. Teammates that attack the unit are going to suffer one stress. All of these things together are going to add up to cause a lot of stress for the enemies. Stress will build and it will be crazy. The obvious thing to do here is throw on all the stress and go for finishers, right? That's what we talked about earlier. But there's a couple other things to think about as well that combo nicely. Celestine's Whispering Knife at level 2 deals additional damage per point of stress on the target. She's also able to heal herself by melee attacking enemies that she's cursed. Eddie can shoot multiple cursed or tethered targets to raise stress even quicker. And we're not even touching signature abilities here that aren't related to stress that are super powerful. Celestine can mesmerize enemies, converting them to allies. And Alexandrite can beckon phantasms to fight for us. If you want to go even wilder here, you could equip the Abdication card on Celestine and increase her damage output after stress breaks. Cool thing about Celestine is that she's capable of stress breaking very easily by using her Occult Gambit ability that grants either 1 AP or 3 stress to her. And when you start upgrading it, it can be triggered multiple times and at max level, it even can be triggered an unlimited amount of times. 
on a turn. I hope this gives you some inspiration for your own party combinations. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel for more Lamplighter tutorials coming soon. And subscribe to my channel at youtube.com slash ChristopherRod if you like turn-based tactics games, because I play a lot of them. Thanks again to Paradox Interactive for working with me on these tutorials. Check out the description below for all things Lamplighters League. Bye for now.